Hello everyone and welcome to CTN's Happy Tales. I am your host, Melissa Bondi. Happy Tales features rescues, organizations, and individuals who volunteer their time helping a variety of animals in many, many ways. Today, I would like to welcome from the Barn Sanctuary in Chelsea, Michigan, which is a nonprofit farm animal sanctuary. I'd like to welcome Dan McKernan, who is the executive director, and Tom McKernan, who is the operations director of the Barn Sanctuary. Welcome, gentlemen, to the show. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Of course, I've been trying to get you on for a couple <laughs> months, but I know it's been very busy. So I want to thank you for coming on today. This is um, an organization that I am thrilled to have featured. So, Dan, we're going to start with you okay. and just tell us how this um, barn sanctuary came to be because you're not that old. Yeah. You, you yourself and also the organization <laughs> thank you. Is, is not. So how, Sorry. how did this come to, <laughs> to be? Uh, so I'll, I'll say barn sanctuary is a farm animal rescue. So we take in farm animals from cases of neglect, abuse, natural disasters. And so uh, back in May 2016, um, my dad here uh, reached out to me and asked me what should we do with our 70 acre property okay. that we've had in our family for 140 years. Okay. And so at that time I've been learning a lot about farm animals and kind of what they go through in the factory farm movement in that area. So I thought it would be uh, a great thing to start a farm animal sanctuary on the farm. At the time, I was working in technology. Mm -hmm. I was living in Austin, Texas, and I was getting really bored of working on the computer every single day. So I really wanted to do something that will help connect with nature okay. and, uh, and be with animals because I've always loved animals. Okay. And the best thing is, you know, being able to do something with the farm that I always visited in the winter and, and in the summer months. And so I proposed the idea of starting a, a nonprofit sanctuary. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So we're in, you know, a new year. So you haven't, hasn't been around, you said 2016. Mm -hmm. So in this time, how many animals have you acquired? How, how many uh, do you have? In the past year, I, I, we rescued 24 animals. And at, at this time, we have about 27 animals currently in our care at the sanctuary. Okay. So we have everything from cows, turkeys, chicken, a chicken. Just no, no. We have three chickens now, okay. and sorry, it's exciting. <coughs> that happened uh, last week. So, uh -huh. uh, Bart and yeah, Bart and Salem. Okay. And then we got donkeys, some cows, and pigs. So yeah. So I would imagine that your week week are different every week. Every day. Every day, yeah, different. of course. <laughs> uh, because you know we get phone calls all the time. There's mm -hmm. different cases that happen. Um, and also, we're working with a very old farm here. Okay. <laughs> so the barn has been around for, I don't know, 90 years, close to that. Something like that. And mm -hmm. then, okay. you know, we uh, retrofitted our storage shed into a building for a number of animals now. Oh, my <laughs> so gosh. we had to do a lot of renovation with that. And so there's a lot of construction going on on the property right now. Okay. So. Okay. Even in, in the winter months? It's, oh, it's yeah. Year-round? Year-round. Year uh, we just finished completing the foundation of our bottom of the barn so that it would uh, stay warmer uh, there. So yeah, right now it's you know a battle against the cold weather, trying to make sure all the animals are nice and warm, but sure. they're, they're doing great. So do either of you, what's your back, oh, you mentioned technology, mm -hmm. but how, like, what's the educational portion of learning about these animals and how to care for them? How, how long have you done it? And well, I grew up on the farm. And okay. It was a small farm, and, you know, not a big farm, but I grew up. We took care of cattle and sheep and pigs okay. and chickens and that sort of thing. So we had that going. <coughs> and what we did also is, um, from that basic point of view, we, we knew how to take care of them, or mm -hmm. at least I did. And Dan has picked up on all of that. Sure. We, we, of course, sure. had pets and everything. But, sure. um, uh, but then we brought in um, an animal care manager who really takes it to the next level. And it's really almost doing daily inspections of our animals to make sure if anybody's got a hiccup or any got, got a little problem. We're sort of keeping good, uh, not medical records, but near medical records about what's happening. Okay. And so we've, uh, we've raised it up quite a bit. It's not just, are, you know, are they standing upright? It's like, you know, are, are they getting the highest level of care? Yeah. And I was, okay, so then my, that leads to my next question is veterinary care? How many vets do you work with? Where are you working with us? Are they open to this? Do you, yeah, like, uh, yeah. So we're we currently work with a, a local uh, vet uh, vet standard out in Manchester, and 
we also work with Michigan State pretty closely. Um, we've even driven one of our animals all the way out to Cornell University to have surgery. So uh, yeah, there are, the vets are our best friends and they help us a lot with everything. Okay. Are there any animals that maybe are new to, to you as far as taking care of? Like you said, you've you know, obviously done this. But anything, any new, like the donkey, have you always, have you always raised donkey? Ne like never, never had donkeys okay. before, so that's kind of new. <laughs> they're, they're, they're interesting. Um, you know, the, the donkey I knew best was Eeyore and Winnie the Pooh. And um, even though they have that sort of demeanor, they're, they're pleasant and happy. And okay. they have uh, unique vocal um, uh, characteristics. Uh, so they'll wake you up in the morning. And um, <laughs> oh they do. They really do. Oh um, but they're great. They approach you. They, they like to be approached from uh, the rear end. They like to have their yeah. back end scratched and whatnot. And so okay. uh, they're, a, they're a lot of fun. Do you have, you didn't mention, or do you get calls or do you have um, house pets? Like the, the cats, the dogs, the guinea pigs, yeah. birds. Do you have those type of animals? So, uh, yeah, we do have a, a Great Dane rescue from when I lived out in Austin that we took in from Houston, Texas. So. We do, we, I mean, we love cats and dogs, and okay. you know, soon, you know, since we're having farm animals with feed and stuff, we're expecting that the barn cats will show up eventually. <laughs> so, okay, okay. Yeah. So I want to talk now a little bit about the farm and visitors. Mm hmm And tell me about that. Well, I guess I found out about um, the barn sanctuary on the internet. Yes. Searching for sanctuaries, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I, is this one that, what's a sanctuary compared to a zoo? Yeah. And a petting farm. We talked a little bit about that. Maybe tell us the difference. Yeah. So for zoos, you know, all the animals are in kind of a smaller enclosure, mm -hmm. which may or may not be their natural habitat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people pay admission and come in, and they're usually open, you know, on the weekdays and weekends, uh, you know, and petting zoos. All the animals on those properties are conditioned to come up and uh, be fed, you know, hand fed. And usually that's not the greatest for animals because they can be overfed and get obese and have a lot of health problems. So here at our farm animal sanctuary, we try to keep our uh, landscape as natural as possible for them. And we try to make it as comfortable for them. It's, we're, we're living with the animals. It's not like they're living on our property. We treat it as if it's their property. Okay. And what do they need? If someone doesn't get along, we put them in somewhere else and we try okay. to make sure that they're happy. So uh, we're not open to the public just yet, um, but okay. this spring we're aiming to open up on the weekends to give guided tours so people can see the animals in, a, in their natural habitat. And most of our animals are super nice and sweet that they'll come up and, you know, You'll, you'll probably be able to pet one of them because they enjoy that. So okay, yeah. So as of right now, if I wanted to visit, I can't visit your property just yet to visit the animals. Yeah. But that's what you're looking to do in the in the spring. In the, it, in the spring, okay. And if you if you're very committed and you really want to come over and see the animals, we do have a volunteer program. Okay. And so you can go on our website at barnsanctuary.org, and there's a little nav item that says get involved, okay. and you can. Uh, apply to be a volunteer and you can volunteer every other week or every week and that's a great way to interact with the animals and uh, get involved because especially at this early stage of a nonprofit right. we're at right now. Right. So well let's talk about volunteering. Yeah. Um, if I wanted to be a volunteer you have to be a certain age right yes. now, right? You have an age restriction mm -hmm. which is? 18 years old. 18. Yeah. Okay. And what are some things that you, give me a list of things that I would Maybe able to do. There you go, Dad. You got, you got those because you do <laughs> well, a lot of those well, things. Well, <laughs> yeah. what? Okay, so prob yeah. probably you know we want to treat all our animals at the highest level of care, and we're probably trying to figure out even how to define what that highest level mm -hmm. of care is. But one of the things is just maintaining uh, their stalls and the area they sleep, and so we're changing. We're you know it's like kitty litter, if you will. We're we're taking care of uh, their kitty litter every day, day in and day out. Um, on a typical farm, that would just build up and build up layer after layer after layer, and then sometime in the spring it would get cleaned out. Well, we clean it out every day. We change the litter every day, if you will. Oh, my gosh. And so it's basically, you know, cleaning up after them in that sure. way and then hauling it off. And so we like to think that we're giving them the same level of care as a thoroughbred horse. Okay. Yeah. And you don't have horses no. at this time? Although we're very, um, you know, 
we empathize with the yes. horse situation. They yeah. require a higher level of facility than right. we have in a special care. And uh, we, we would love to be able to help with that, but not right now. Okay. Yeah. So if, you're, if I'm volunteering, it's safe to say I'm probably doing 90% yep. outside. Am I outside? Yeah. <laughs> or or in, in, in their enclosures, probably. Or in the, barns, in the barns, usually, especially during the winter months because the animals are usually inside a lot. Okay. Um, a, lot a lot of, you know, we call it, you know, just mucking the barn, but okay. also, uh, you know, filling up the water dishes, uh, feeding them some hay. Okay. Cleaning the dishes. And, and, yeah. and a lot of the volunteers do love to just hang out and take pictures with the animals. Yeah. And sure. So we allow that. All the time. Absolutely. I'll, okay. I'll go pick this up and take it over here. And in the meantime, I'm petting the animals. <laughs> yeah. I'm walking around. I'm leaning on them. And How can you not? Yeah, yeah. I would think. Um, is there any uh, training that you require or ask or will you train? Like, if I, yeah. I don't know anything about barn animals. To, no, to definitely. Volunteer. Okay. So anyone can get involved. And our Christine, our uh, care manager, she, she puts everyone through a day's worth of training or two okay. days worth of training where... She, you know, tells them how to be safe around the animals and how to interact with them. So she, she does a great job at training them. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. The main thing is to make sure you're not putting your foot where the animal wants to put its foot. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, you don't want to be stepped on. So you got to kind of <laughs> watch where their feet are. That's the main thing. Yeah. And especially from the... Charles. Charles, the steer that you yes. have? That yes. you, how, a, how much does he weigh? Probably almost, he's almost 2,000 pounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's still and growing. And he moves, he moves gently growing. and slowly, but okay. he's not going to change his placement if you decide to change yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. He'll walk there. through, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, like I said, I was doing some research for sanctuaries mm -hmm. to where you can take kids and younger ones to learn and, inter I don't want to say interact, but learn about mm -hmm. these animals. And I struggle with zoos, and I struggle with petting zoos. Um, just of the captivity aspect of it. So when I looked up barn, barn when I looked up um, sanctuaries, because that's what the website said to you, there were only, I only saw two. Mm -hmm. Yours was one of them in Michigan, yes. particularly. Um, do you have, like, who, who do you talk to, discuss? Is there any type of um, network of network talking with people? That, yeah, for this, for this Definitely. Know, industry, but. So there are a limited amount of sanctuaries here in Michigan, but uh, for instance, New York has probably close to 10 sanctuaries okay. out there. And so every year we actually go to a farm animal care conference, and that's, uh, it's in Watkins Glen, and that sanctuary is called Farm Sanctuary. And they're almost, they've been my mentors since the beginning, so if I have any advice on, uh, it could be operational or it can be about animal care. They usually know what's up because they've been around for 30 years. Okay. Yep. And, and there is a Facebook group and it's they're called the global federation of animal sanctuaries mm -hmm. and it's not just mm -hmm. farm sanctuaries it's all types of sanctuaries okay. and so uh, they have accreditation and okay. so we can always find resources from them too yeah and their the global federation is mostly for exotic animals, yeah. and they're global actually truly global <laughs> sure the association of uh, zoos and aquariums too is is I believe can be a great resource for us also. Okay. And we're going to try to combine the information okay. that, that both of those organizations provide to help us be organized and okay. be able to sort of be at, at the good housekeeping seal approval level. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. And we were talking earlier about, um, like we were saying, petting zoos, I can go in and I can pet and touch mm -hmm. and feed, and a zoo, you, you cannot do that. Yeah. Um, and a sanctuary, if I wanted to come there and visit the spring, mm -hmm. um, bring my daughter and she wants to pet the donkey, mm -hmm. is that encouraged, is that allowed, or is it discouraged, or, or how would you, how do you well, answer we, that when people We ask? always want to think like safety first, so you know, okay. we don't want kids putting their hands in through the fencing because they can okay. hurt their arm, but <laughs> if a donkey is there and is curious, yeah, we can always encourage someone to pet them because, you know, animals love to be loved, so, sure. you know, of course they want to be petted at times, and if they're near the chickens, and chicken wants to come sit on their lap. Okay, you know, we'll allow that. It's, okay. it's pretty much the animals are in charge, so it's whatever they want to do. We try not to force anything for like a photo op or anything like that. Yeah. Right, and we've we've arranged the fencing in such a way that we have walkways and pathways around different pastures, okay. so that it's not like you're standing 150 yards yeah. away and oh, you see the cow over there? No, so you can walk around and get relatively close. And okay, we've arranged it mm -hmm. that way. So, okay. Yeah. Um, as far as, we talked about volunteering, as far as donations, mm -hmm. 
what are some things, you're a nonprofit, so mm -hmm. what are some things that viewers can donate? What are some things that you need or yeah. need of? Definitely. Uh, <laughs> right now, we just finished, wrapped up a good fundraiser for winter hay and straw because we oh. go through a lot during the winter months. Okay. But uh, right now, we're trying to get people to just donate a dollar, a couple bucks a okay. month because, you know, Knowing the amount of donations coming in the following month definitely helps uh, keep the nonprofit very sustainable. And they can look at that link if they go to barnsanctuary.org. They okay. can see a big image right there, and it'll be like, click here to be a $1 donor or $2 donor. And okay. that, that's something we really encourage. And if you're looking to tribute a gift or um, you know, sponsor an animal in honor of someone, someone can go on our website as well and click Meet the Animals, and you can sponsor an animal monthly. And, uh, you'll get a special card in the mail with their story and their image. So okay. you can do that as well. Yeah. And there's the Amazon wish list. And then there's the Amazon. There's so many ways to give. <laughs> so we have an right. Amazon wish list on the website too. Sure. And uh, we try to update that every couple weeks with items we need to help run the farm. Okay. So, yeah. so recently we've been getting heated water buckets yeah. given our... our heated water buckets. Yes. So is, is it on the wish list? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. I think there's a couple still there. And some heat lamps and, some heat and okay. lamps, uh, even some turkey feed we put on there, and you know whatever we can find on Amazon we, uh, that we think can really help the animals we put on there. Because okay. uh, some people are way more comfortable. Actually, they want to buy, know what their money's being being put to, and yeah, yeah. Right, right. So that's why the Amazon wish list is a great resource. Too. Absolutely, yeah. yeah I, I saw that on your website. By the way, your website is very organized. That's my so. background. <laughs> you did a great Web job. Design, so thank you. Did you did a great job. Thank you. Yep, it's <laughs> very, very organized and um, detailed enough that so people aren't, you know, they could find what they're looking for. Yeah. So, and more. Um, yeah, I wanted to mention the, uh, that's funny that about the sponsoring because that was one of the things I was looking to do for my daughter's birthday mm -hmm. was sponsor an animal. And I actually saw an article, I think it was on the Dodo, of, uh, which is a website, a popular um, website uh, of another, of a, a situation where another, child did it and I don't yeah. know if it was the barn sanctuary but I did see it and so I think I searched that as well like yeah. how can we sponsor an animal and that was that's a great idea yeah no it's great we have a number of people that sponsor our animals and you know once again those are monthly donations coming in that okay. definitely helps us out and so even like a dollar a month uh well like is each it, is animal it? has kind of a set amount okay so you know I, I believe like a chick you know, a chicken would be, I think it's like 5 or $10 a month. And, okay. But you still get the photo card, and you get to know them, and we try to send updates on your sponsored animal and all of that. So. And, and, and sponsors would get sort of a special tour when they, and if they yeah. come for a visit. Aww. Definitely. So, to, you know, they, sure. they'll get to hug their animal. Maybe. <coughs> mm -hmm. And, well, I know on, you're very active on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, at least I didn't know that's where I follow, and I've seen some live, yeah. Facebook Live. Um, you put a lot of photos. So tell us about y your use of Facebook. And yeah, we try to. Facebook is a great tool for us, especially because they don't charge a transaction rate for donations, mm -hmm. which is amazing. And so we try to update it regularly because we want to be completely transparent with the public on what we're sure. doing on the farm. Facebook Live is a great tool for us to interact with our followers, um, being able to do it live, answering questions in real time when we're with the animals, or even asking the viewers, who should we go see next? Should okay. we go see Penny the pig or Mike the calf? And okay. having people interact that way, it's, it's just a great resource. It's having like a, a TV show online, <laughs> really. And so how can people find? If you go to uh, facebook.com slash the barn sanctuary, or you can just search barn sanctuary okay. on Facebook and we'll pop up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're hoping, actually, from a technological point of view, to get some uh, cameras going uh, so, so that people can uh -huh. click on. And, yeah, and live streaming cameras yeah. in the I pastures see. and in the barns so people can yep. just check in on the animals whenever they want. Yeah. That's the level of transparency we really want to be at. Yeah, very popular. Yeah. I, I know I've seen some stuff online of just the, you know, if it's the, the cow cam or whatever, whatever yeah, animal yeah. it is, but yeah, I've yeah. seen that stuff. Um, you never know when something cute's going to happen. I, yeah. I've always said I need to <laughs> wear a GoPro that. all the time when I'm, <laughs> when I'm feeding them because it'll oh be like 90% of the time it's just business as usual. And all of a sudden, somebody does something really unusual and cute <laughs> or something. It's like, yeah. oh, I wish I could have captured that. But. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can only imagine if you wore a GoPro, you, both of you, yeah, around all day. Very. The fun stuff you would catch. Aww. There'd be a um, lot of footage. It would be pretty good stuff. 
<laughs> <laughs> Are there any animals that you want to tell us about that have a special story? Yeah, or? so every animal we get at the sanctuary comes from a very unique perspective and have, they have a very unique story. How we acquire the animals, people reach out and let us know of something happening. Um, we really don't go out looking for animals uh, unless someone said something. And okay. so, for instance, uh, Adam, our pig that we rescued uh, last January, he jumped off a transport truck in the middle of the night uh, up in Midland, Michigan. And so, you know, he's running for his life on the interstate and the Humane Society luckily uh, rescued him. And then they need to find a forever home, so they called us. And so we were, we were able to rescue Adam. Yeah. Okay. Took him to Michigan State, got him checked out. Took yeah. him to Michigan, that's our routine. Take him to Michigan State, give him the best care possible. Yeah. And then uh, another one would be Little Dude. Uh, we call him Little Dude, the internet one with the naming of Little Dude. So, um, we got him. He was this big. We got him at four days old, weighed under two pounds, and bottle feeding him every two hours. And he was, uh, someone was at a, a farm and saw that a piglet wasn't being nursed, and his siblings were actually kind of chewing off his bone. Uh, and so, yeah, and his foot. And so, to make sure that the foot doesn't have to be amputated, we wanted to get the best medical care. So, uh, I decided to drive little dude all the way up to Cornell University to have surgery okay. so that he wouldn't have a bacterial infection. And so now, now he's back at the farm. I don't know how much he weighs now. Probably 80 pounds. 80, 80 pounds. pounds. Yeah. Moving, moving like a truck. He's awesome. <laughs> he's just, he loves the camera. He's staying in the, I call it the interspecies barn where the goats, sheep, and Mike, <laughs> the, the semi-blind calf is. So they're all hanging out with each other. And it's a really, uh, yeah. It's awesome to go in that barn. I yeah, like it a lot. He's a, <laughs> yeah, he's, he has quite a personality. And he has a crooked snout, so he's very unique looking. Are all these animals, are they all on your website? Uh, no, I or, need to add them all on the okay. website. That's my fault. You <laughs> well, quite little a few, dude, yeah. quite little dude is yeah. definitely there. Little dude's on there. Okay. Uh, Mike's on there. And so I do need to add some of the turkeys and the goats and sheep. Okay. But, um, okay. Yeah. yeah. If, if, if someone's in a dire need of sponsoring an animal, let me know, and I'll add them to the website <laughs> ASAP. Okay. So. <laughs> and can people reach you? I, they can reach you right through the website? Yeah, the, there's a contact form. Yeah. They can go on our Facebook page and message us. Um, okay. And then also our phone number is available on the website as well. To call. Mm -hmm. What's the best method, do you, do you feel? Uh, best method? Probably Facebook or uh, the contact form on our website. Okay. Yeah. So I think I Facebook messaged. Yeah. And I got a reply, a reply pretty quickly yeah. when I found it. So we have an amazing uh, marketing communications director working full time. So yeah, she yeah. was very quick. I'm gonna yeah. tell you, she was like quick on that. So that's yeah. how I knew. I'm like, you got this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, let me ask about as far as the future mm -hmm. of the farm. Do you see? I know you mentioned tours yes. coming up in the spring. And do you think you'll be able to handle more animals? Are you at capacity or do you, wh so, wh what do you see? Currently, we're only using seven acres out of the 70 total oh acres. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and so we actually hired an architect okay. and engineering company to help us lay out a site plan of the entire property. Okay. So that there's, you know, uh, eventually we're gonna have a cow barn, we're gonna have a pig barn, goat and sheep barn. Waterfowl. Waterfowl barn, because we got a nice big pond. And then, um, yeah, we're going to allow people to walk through the property and okay. really, those are going to be longer tours, of course, uh, but uh, we really plan on developing out the property to use all of it. So Yeah, we're still relatively young, obviously, yeah, right. and so we're trying to kind of catch up with uh, everything we've done so far. We're going to probably clean up the site, do some landscaping. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it looks like right now everything that was in the buildings is now outside of the okay. buildings yeah. and there's piles of dirt everywhere and so we're still trying to clean up and uh, okay. get ready for the, the springtime opening. Plenty so. of activities for volunteers. Yeah. Okay. You want to clean out old junk. It's not all junk, it's memories. Sorry. Yeah, memories, yes. Um, Scrap iron. Okay. Junk. Uh -huh. <laughs> no. I would imagine once the, or have you gotten inquiries from Girl Scout troops, schools, yeah. field trip type. Home schools. Home uh, schools. Yeah, yeah, and just local schools. We definitely want to get to the point where we can bring in school buses of kids. Right. Um, that's in our overall site plan is even to have parking for the school buses. And yeah. okay. uh, we'll eventually, uh, probably won't happen this year, but uh, have an education center okay. so that we can do a lot of uh, teaching in there. We're, it'll have a full-size kitchen so we can do some cooking classes. 
because okay. we do educate the public about a plant-based diet as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so living a more compassionate way of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of our advantages is, is that we're literally at the intersection of I-94 and 52. So it's very easy for, if you're coming from Ann Arbor, if you're coming from East Lansing, or coming from Detroit, just jump on the expressway and you're right there. And okay. It's really easy mm -hmm. to find. Okay, yeah. so location. Um, I wanted to, I have this to give you. Aww. So our Those director here, oh. yeah, so we've got some Quilts. blankets for the animals. Oh my I, I believe her Those mom. Those are adorable. They're super cute. Her mom um, no way. made them. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So wow. I wanted to give them to you for Thank some animals. Thank you. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, yeah. I know the, the weather's going to turn here on us shortly. So yeah. still winter. These um, are amazing. Thank you. Grandma used to make some like that. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so again, why don't you tell our viewers real quick where they can find you yes. and um, just real quick, what are some things that you are in need of right now as far as donation-wise? Okay. Uh, you can find us online at barnsanctuary.org. I should look at the camera. Barnsanctuary.org and also on Facebook. And right now we're, we're looking for just the small donations coming in so that we can sustain all of our... Uh, ongoing monthly expenses so you know a small five dollar recurring gift goes a, a far far away so that's what we're currently looking for okay yeah wonderful thank well, you thank you guys so much for for joining us it's people like you that make me want to continue doing shows like this because i you're the your hearts are so big and i just can't even express just the <laughs> amazingness of what you Thank do you. for a living because you went from a computers to, to animals rescuing um, animals yeah. just it's animals amazing. it's amazing so it's, both of you it's satisfying on so many levels yeah it I, really totally is. is yes i know and i i envy and i um i just what you guys do for a living is is amazing Thank thank you, you both thank you for coming on and and sharing your story and i hope that people will um Definitely tour. I know I am yeah. this spring. So for sure. Definitely. Cool. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's it for this episode of Heavy Tales. For more information on the Barn Sanctuary, you can visit them online at barnsanctuary.org, and you can also visit them on Facebook. And for more great programming from CTN, you can visit us on the web at a2gov.org slash CTN, or talk to us on social media at hashtag CTN Ann Arbor. Again, thanks for watching.